All right, guys, let's make this cup. I started by designing it in Procreate first so that I can get a feel of what I wanted to do. Fair warning, I do things a little weird around here. So I'm out of regular cups. So I'm using a sublimation tumbler from other tumblers. So I'm giving that a really good sand so that nothing kind of repels from that sublimation coating. Now I'm taking my two pattern vinyls into Cricut Design Space for a double V split. So the pine cones is going to be that thinner V split. And then this full vinyl is going to be the big triangle V split part, okay? So after it's all cut, I'm going to go ahead and peel off um, the excess vinyl just so I can save that if I wanted to do some circles on the bottom or something like that. You could have also, I set this up a little weird, but you could have also just done a regular triangle. Um, this is just how I designed it in Procreate and there are a ton of V split templates out there. Typically when I do tumblers, I like to add my vinyl at the very end, but I didn't want to mess up any of my line work where the vinyl meets the glitter because I don't typically do the double V splits like this. So I'm applying my vinyl first. I like to kind of cut it so that it's a little easier to place. And no, I don't use transfer tape. I think it is a lot easier for me to just apply it with my hands. That way I don't get as many bubbles or creases. But if you wanted to use transfer tape, that's totally fine. And now I'm going to put the other side on and match it up the best that I can. Um, yours might not be set up like mine if you're used to using a different vinyl or if you place your vinyl differently on the mat. But after it's all said and done, it'll be perfectly fine. Now I'm going to go in and add my little um, thinner V-split area. I eyeball this. I know that that is crazy to some people, but I do a lot better when I'm eyeballing it, and I typically don't have any issues. So let's put that other part down. I wanted to make sure that I still had room for the decal that will be applied um, later on. This vinyl is removable. Um... So if you mess up like you just saw me do, it's super easy to peel it up and do it again, especially if it's on a bare tumbler with no epoxy or glitter yet. So Judy Gracefully Created Vinyl is very, very forgiving. So it took me a few tries to line it up since I didn't use any transfer tape or anything. And after it was lined up, I can go ahead and cut off that excess for that V split part. The next thing we're gonna do is we are going to put painter's tape all over the vinyl. That way, when I go to use my glue and paint and glitter, the vinyl can be protected. So this is why I said I usually add my vinyl later so I can be as messy as I want. But I took a lot of time on this tumbler so that it, so that it would be perfect. So these are just the steps we're going to be taking. I use the Scotch brand painter's tape. It literally makes a difference. Trust me, I've gotten off-brand painter's tape before and it was not the same. So definitely recommend getting the good stuff. All right, I still have room for my decal, so we are ready to go. We are going in with adhesive apothecary glitter glue on the top and we are going to be ombre Heart Happy and Diamond. Heart Happy is my favorite glitter from PDB Creative Studio and it is a fine glitter. Diamond is more of a chunky mix and what Diamond is gonna do is it's just going to give us a little extra dimension and sparkle. So I'm evenly spreading my glitter glue and then we can go ahead. I'm starting out with diamond on the top. I'm not doing a ton, you know, heavy coverage on the very top and then I start to sprinkle it down. These two colors are very easy to blend together. And then we're going in with heart happy. And then I'm actually going over the diamond so that if there's any parts that any glitter didn't adhere, um, that heart happy will fill it in. So now we're going to go in with the V-Split. I'm using Fake Spooky in a combination of Charisma and Magnolia Blossom just to lighten up Charisma a little bit. So I'm using Adhesive Apothecary Cauldron Colors again. I really like this tan and I'm being careful. I'm trying not to oversaturate it so it doesn't leak under the tape and get on my vinyl. And I'm just doing um, a nice thin and even coat everywhere. So on the top, we are going to use the Charisma Mix and then we're going to start to sprinkle that as we get closer to the middle. This is also a finer mix, so this will be really easy to get smooth. So sprinkle it here, and then we're going in with fake spooky. I know this is a spooky glitter, but it's the perfect black glitter. It sparkles so much under epoxy, it has silver in it, chunkies, a lot of dimension, so this can be used all year round. It is amazing. And then for the very bottom of the tumbler, we're going to use Charisma. I chose this because if I were to use Fake Spooky, it would take a few more steps in sanding to get that bottom rim smooth. So anytime um, I can, I try and use my finer mixes for the very bottom of the tumbler. 
just take your time try not to get paint on your vinyl it's okay if you get glitter on your vinyl because you'll be able to just wipe it away really easily sorry i had to get my glitter back in the cup and all that so here is the charisma mix and that was super easy to do now i'm going to peel off all the tape this part always takes me quite a few minutes because my tape never just peels like i never get the satisfying tape peel literally ever in my life <laughs> but after a few minutes i get it and i'm not worried about those white parts showing because we're going to be adding some textured striping vinyl um, later on after the cup is smooth so there was no reason that I had to get all of those um, lines perfect. So now I'm going to let my glitter dry for about 30 minutes and then we need to take the proper steps to seal this in. If I were to just epoxy this right now that glitter would rub everywhere and we don't want that. So while it is drying I'm taking the time to kind of swipe away any glitter that landed on my vinyl. You can use a dry paintbrush or just a baby wipe. I just used my finger. Here it is. Look how magical. So here I am taking a very tiny paintbrush and kind of swiping away some parts. And then I realized my paintbrush was dirty. And I was like, oh my gosh, I totally almost messed up this whole cup. <laughs> just make sure you clean up your vinyl as much as you can and you will be fine. long pause you guys know i always have like the long awkward pauses sometimes i actually like to get some painter's tape and put it along my edges and it'll pull up that glitter so now i'm going to start by sealing off my whole tumbler with a spray adhesive i know it's a spray adhesive but it has a really strong bond and i use this to seal my glitter um religiously it is literally the best so i'm trying not to i'm trying to angle it right so that when i spray it the glitter doesn't like swish onto the vinyl and then I'm going to go in with Adhesive Apothecary Binding Potion. This is a very thick sealer, and this is going to officially seal that glitter in. After this dries, you're not going to have any glitter move. And it also just, it helps with epoxy. Like, this is already kind of starting to smooth out the glitter and giving it a good seal so bubbles don't collect and glitter doesn't move. And I notice when I do a really thick coat like this, I need less layers of epoxy. So don't forget to clean up some edges if you made a mess. I am very messy, so I'll usually just take a baby wipe and kind of clean up the edges. That thick coat took about three hours to dry, okay? Literally. And then I did one coat of epoxy. After one coat of epoxy, I am going to start my striping tape. I will link this and the thickness that I used below. The reason why I'm applying my striping tape now even though my cup isn't fully smooth, is because this textured vinyl is very thick. And I know that it takes usually two coats of epoxy for you to not feel that vinyl anymore. So my cup wasn't perfectly smooth, but it was definitely smooth enough to start this striping. I love this vinyl so much. What I do is I just make a bunch of rectangles in Cricut Design Space, and I cut a bunch at once so that I'm kind of set for the next month. Okay, so I'm lining all of my vinyl now, and then I'm actually going to go over all of that gold with super thin black striping lines as well. I do get a lot of questions on where do you get the striping tape and all that, and like I just said, I just cut it on my Cricut. I buy rolls of permanent vinyl, and I just cut a bunch at once because I love the colors, and I like to control how thick my lines are going to be. So this part, this is very thin, so you kind of want to take your time and make sure you can get it as straight as possible. When the vinyl is super thin like this, it's very easy for it to kind of stretch and all that. So just really take your time and you will be fine. I like layering the vinyl like this. I just feel like it makes it so much classier and I am obsessed with the outcome. Again long awkward pauses okay just just deal with it if you want to learn from me i don't always have my life together look look at me messing up <laughs> it's so flimsy sometimes it's hard to work with but it is worth it trust me also i am using a ryobi exacto knife i also get a lot of questions on that after i did the whole thing i'm going to seal in my vinyl with binding potion again vinyl this thin it's super easy for it to lift especially this gold texture wrap vinyl okay so just 
take the extra step and seal it in and you will thank yourself later. This is more of a thin coat, so this should only take, you know, 30, 45 minutes to dry. And then we are going to put another layer of epoxy on because this was not smooth enough for the decal. So I am just using Amazing Cast Epoxy for Michaels. I know that that's crazy, but I love it. It's my favorite epoxy. I've been using it for months now and I love it a lot. So I'm just putting a thin coat. Um, I try not to do thick coats because then it's really easy for bubbles to collect. And I'm sorry, the angle is kind of weird here. <laughs> I took it off my turner to video me um, epoxying it and the angle was not it at all. So I let that dry overnight and then we're going to clean this up a little bit. So I like to take an X-Acto knife to my rim just to clean it up a little bit. And then also a Dremel. This is the step before the last layer of epoxy where you wanna make sure your rim has a good seal on it and it is nice and smooth. I have been using this Dremel since I've started making tumblers and I'm obsessed with it. I don't know if they still make it, but any Dremel with this tip will work. I know a lot of people like the flap wheels, but I've never had a lot of luck with that. So it is nice and smooth. And then I'm going to take just a sanding pad to make sure it is good to go. I'll also sand the bottom rim um, at this step as well. Okay. Now, I cut this little template with the pinecone vinyl on my Cricut. I just put a bunch of circles together and sliced it. And that is going to go on the very bottom of my cup. I just wanted, I wanted to be a little different. I usually do just a vinyl circle on the bottom, but I really like this setup. So now I will use transfer tape. So some things I have to use transfer tape before, for so it doesn't get all out of alignment and stuff. So I'm putting that on the bottom. And that's just a nice easy way to decorate the bottom of your tumbler. This is tech wrap transfer tape as well. So now we're ready to add our decal. The decal is also from Gracefully Created. I designed all of this and it's my favorite set I think I've ever made. So we are putting that on the top. I also eyeball this. I live life on the edge, okay? Always. So if it doesn't lay down right the first time, I'll fix it. <laughs> All right, now it is ready um, for one more layer of epoxy. So I'm just taking my little sanding block and smoothing out any other, you know, bubbles or bumps or anything like that. All right, from there, you're going to epoxy it one more time, and then we're going to get our charm ready. So I had to cut off the top of this charm because I had an extra piece on it. So now I'm just sanding it down so it doesn't have any sharp metal sticking up. And then we're going to apply this right on that little triangle area of our V-split. I'm using Gem Tac, and I believe I'm going to let this dry for 24 hours. This is the first time I've used Gem Tac, but it is pretty hardened and in place. And then after it dried for about an hour, I was able to apply the little charm. So this part is magnetic, so you could actually just pull up the top half of it and then apply your charm and stick it back. And this also makes it really easy to wash. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Make sure to do the charm part after your final layer of epoxy, okay? And then you are good to go. And let me know if you guys make this too.